today, television company Western Armenia represent the most important news for today. The complex of Monastery of Tatev and Great Desert of Tate will soon be protected by UNESCO. Grigor Amirzanyan. Earthquake in Yerzenka. The Human Rights European Court made a decision regarding the killing of Armenian servicemen. Why India cannot recognize the genocide committed against Armenia? Kapil Komaradi. The Republic of Armenia intends to make additional efforts to raise the cooperation with the European Union to a new quality level. Tigran Balayan, Charles Michel. Georgia's peace initiative between Baku and Yerevan has given concrete results. Gary Bashvigi. Gold Hands Expo event. Deputy of the Third Convocation of the National Assembly of Western Armenia, Grigor Amirzanyan, wrote in his microblog that Eastern Armenia, within the framework of the Convocation of the Protection of Cultural Values in the Condition of Armed Conflicts, the ensemble of monuments, Tatev monastic complexes, and the Great Desert of Tatev, as well as the Vorotan River George, will have an enhanced protection status. Enhanced protection under UNESCO's 1954 statute, which was annexed to the Convention in 1999, is a mechanism developed by the second protocol or to establish special protection for cultural property in the event of armed conflict. The application submitted by the Eastern Armenia was approved at the 18th se session of the con Convention of the Protection of Cultural Property in the Situation of Armed Conflict, the Hague in 1945, committee held at UNESCO. After discussion with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Defense of Eastern Armenia, as well as the permanent representation of Eastern Armenia to UNESCO Research Center of Historical and Cultural Heritage, prepared the nomination and presented it to UNESCO. The candidacy passed through the different levels of the convention was approved by the Secretariat, after which it was included in the agenda of the December session of the committee. The duration of the project is 15 months. In 1995, the group of monuments, monastery complexes of Tatev and Tatev Great Desert and Vorotan River George was included in the preliminary list of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. The approved grant will simultaneously create all the necessary prerequisites for including the group of monuments in the main list, which is also included the upcoming plans. You can learn more about the topic in the video published by Grigor Amirzanyan. The second earthquake has been occurred in Celtic district of Gimushane province, located in the northwest of Zierzenga. Celtic district is located on the right side of the current Rapizon Road. As reported by the Disaster and Emergency Management of Turkey, it happened in the evening time in December 18 with a magnitude of 4. On the same day, in the morning time, December 18, Celtic was also shaken by a magnitude of 4. The European Court of Human Rights published a verdict in the case Naya Narayan and other against Azerbaijan. According to the decision of the European Court, Article 2 of the Convention on Right to Life was violated regarding the death of serviceman Edgar Manarayan and Eric Abovian, as well as the lack of any investigation into the circumstances of their death. The European Court recorded that there is no need to examine in accordance with Article 14 of the Convention Right to Effective Defense. There is no need to examine in accordance with Article 14 of the Convention Prohibition of Discrimination. In addition, according to the decision of the European Court, Azerbaijan is obliged to pay the applicant 16,000 euros for each application, plus any taxes within three months after the date of the legal entry into force of the court judgment, in accordance with Article 44, Clause 2 of the Convention, which may be charged for non pecuniary damage more than 2,708 euros per application to be paid jointly to the applicants concerned, plus any tax that may be charged to them in respect of cost. The applicants are the relatives of servicemen of the armed forces of Eastern Armenia. The case refers to the killing of Armenian servicemen by Azerbaijan soldier Chingiz Gurbanov. Indian writer and publicist Kapil Komaradi in the morning contest right. Why can't India recognize the Armenian genocide? Turkey does not hesitate to insult New Delhi, published an article. Komaradi writes that in 20th century, Ottoman Turkey initiated a long-term operation to massacre an entire people. The bloodiest century in human history led the eminent Polish Jewish jurist Rafael Lemkin to coin the term genocide and ensuring it as a crime in international law. 44 countries remember the genocide against Armenians every year. 
India is not among them. For example, Russia and the United States effectively are in war in Ukraine, but every year briefly unite to deplore the murder of over 2 million Armenians by Imperial Turkey and then forget. The world's most populous democracy in India will, however, keep its mouth shut so as not to anger the genocide deniers in Ankara. Let's remind that Kapil Komiradi is the same Indian journalist who referred to Islamized Armenians as well. On December 18, Ambassador Tiglan Balayan, the head of the representation of Eastern Armenia in the European Union, presented his credentials to the President of the European Council, Charles Michel. This was reported by Representative Office of Eastern Armenia in the European Union. Welcoming and wishing success to Ambassador Balayan, the President of the European Council, Charles Michel, highlighted the initiatives aimed at the promoting Armenia. European Union relations and ensured his readiness to support them. Expressing thanks and good wishes to the Grand Balayan, he noted that Eastern Armenia aims to make additional efforts to raise their cooperation with the European Union and its member states to a new collective level, emphasizing and highly appreciating the personal efforts of Charles Michel towards the establishment of peace in the South Caucasia. Ambassador Balayan emphasized that the gross violation of the agreements reached within the framework of the Brussels format by Baku and the lack of consequences for them eventually led to the ethnic cleansing of Artsakh. So it is necessary to take steps in the direction of Baku's implementation of all legally binding decisions of the International Court of Justice and Azerbaijan's return to the negotiation table. The two sides also exchanged ideas about the border demarcation process and the unblocking of communication channels and roads within the framework of which Ambassador Balayan presented in detail the Crossroads of Peace project initiated by the Republic of Armenian government. The ambassador gave details to the President of the European Council about Baku's increasing aspirations towards the sovereign territory of Armenia and continues attempts to the peace process, including the real reasons for not appearing at the negotiations scheduled in Granada and Brussels. Emphasizing highly appreciating Charles Michel's personal efforts towards establishing peace in the South Caucasus, Ambassador Balayan emphasized that Baku's gross violation of the agreement reached within the framework of the Brussels format and the lack of consequences for them eventually led to the ethnic cleansing of Artsakh. Therefore, it is necessary to take steps to fulfill all the legally binding decisions of the International Court of Justice on Baku's part and return Azerbaijan to a negotiation table. Georgia's peace initiative between Baku and Yerevan has given concrete results. Prime Minister of Georgia, Irakli Garibashvili, said this while presenting the report on result of 2023. He noted that the government of Georgia maintains close, friendly relations with its partners in the region, Baku, Yerevan, and Ankara. We are certainly interested in establishing long-term peace and stability in the region. Georgia makes an important contribution to achieving this goal. Some time ago, the Prime Minister of Azerbaijan and the Prime Minister of Armenia were in Georgia, and we had a unique opportunity to hold a tripartite meeting. I think this was an interesting precedent that we have reached, said the Prime Minister Garibashvili. Garibashvili reminded that intensive visits were made between neighboring countries. I have been to Azerbaijan several times. The President of Azerbaijan and the Prime Minister of Armenia have been to Georgia. We continue the strategic partnership and cooperation with Turkey at a high level. This year, the Golden Hands Expo was supposed to take place in Artsakh, in the Yemishanj community of Marduni region. But due to well-known incidents, it took place in year one with the efforts of Artsakh Mothers Support Center NGO. More than 50 producers participated in the expo, some of which started their activities in Artsakh, and some of them are taking the first step, trying to alleviate the difficult post-war situation. According to the organizers, the expo can be considered successful, managed to gather talented Artsakh women on the wine floor, and for a moment, the participants felt to be in Artsakh. And according to the visitors, the expo was expected not only because they were able to buy Artsakh products, but they were able to appear in a place where Artsakh dialect was everywhere, familiar to everyone. According to the organizers, they were able to implement the project within a small amount of money due to the people who expressed their willingness to support the project for free or by symbolic money. Speaking about the results of the expo, the organizers note that the Golden Hands Expo was not an end in itself, but an opportunity for creative women to cooperate with each other 
to get to know buyers and producers, and it worked. Many of the participants received various cooperation offers, registered, ordered, and those people who could not appear at the expo write and want to take uh, data from different manufacturers in order to make New Year's purchases from Artsakh manufacturers. This is all for today. You can now listen to a musical performance. Goodbye. Shangu ga kaka lakhta, don't go up